The words separation of church and state don't actually appear in our Constitution. The First Amendment to the Constitution opens with the words, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Uh, in that clause, essentially, we have two provisions. The first of them prevents there being a national establishment of religion, or interestingly, there being any interference by the federal government with religious establishments in the states. Uh, originally, several of our states, depending on what you count an establishment as being, uh, even a majority of our states had established churches. Uh, those eventually, by the 1830s, uh, died out. They were abolished by the states themselves, but they were not considered to be unconstitutional. The purpose of the First Amendment, indeed the purpose of the Bill of Rights, was to constrain the power of the federal government, not the power of the states. The second part of that religion clause of the First Amendment guaranteed that the government would not interfere with people's exercise of their faith. Uh, going to church or deciding not to go to church or praying or worshiping in one way or another. The words separation of church and state first appear uh, in our uh, political history in a letter that Thomas Jefferson wrote uh, to, the, um, uh, to a Baptist uh, congregation, uh, assuring them essentially of protection of religious freedom. And the words are meant to capture the spirit of the Establishment Clause, the idea that there will not be a national establishment of religion. But in separating the institutions of the church and the institutions of the state, there was never a thought, nor should we entertain the idea, that there is a separation of religion from public life or religion from politics. Our tradition in the United States is really quite the opposite. Religious people have always been involved in politics. Religious people have been leaders of important movements, the movement to abolish slavery. Uh, the movement against child labor and abusive uh, and exploitative labor practices toward women, uh, the movement to uh, correct the great injustices of segregation. Uh, these were all led by religious people. Think of the civil rights movement and its leaders, beginning with the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. Uh, so we do not in the United States under our First Amendment properly understood disenfranchise religious people or require them to privatize their beliefs uh, or refrain from bringing their religiously inspired moral convictions into the public square. As I say, the contrary is, uh, the contrary is true. Uh, we believe in a robust polity, a robust politics in which people of all different faiths, unrestrained, can enter the public square uh, and vie for the allegiance of their fellow citizens and advocate the policies they think are right and just.